Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This episode, we'll be talking a little bit about gentleness, what it is and what it isn't. I think a good place to start is to see what the Bible has to say about it, though. James 3.17 But the wisdom from above is, first of all, pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insincerity. This seems like a good starting point. Gentleness is peaceful, merciful, produces good things, and complies honestly and dependably. This states that gentleness is like a calm, virtuous series of decisions, combined with a willingness to forgive others. However, that still leaves a lot of things unresolved. Some people, for example, say that in order to really be gentle, you mainly need to let other people get their way, or at least not stomp on their egos too much. Other people think you need to have a passive kind of personality. There's also a fair number who think you need to be like a doormat to really be gentle. However, there's more about gentleness than just that one verse. 1 Peter 3, 14 to 16 But even if you should suffer because of righteousness, blessed are you. Do not be afraid or terrified with fear of them, but sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. This verse clearly defines a type of gentleness that doesn't let itself get steamrolled, proving that interpretation number three is wrong. But more importantly, it talks about defending the truth of the clear conscience, which isn't possible for a passive person who's always letting others get their way. On top of that, it even says that not only should a gentle person not be afraid of other people, and not only should we not be afraid to hurt an ego or two, but gentleness can actually be a valid means of hurting the egos of people who insist on holding a wrong position. Remember, when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. In other words, just by maintaining good conduct, you make it much harder for other people to find any fault with you. If they can't find fault with you, their ad hominem attacks against you will ring more and more hollow to outside observers. I'd say that's a good piece of advice if I ever heard one, and it basically disproves all three false impressions of gentleness. So, gentleness isn't about being passive or never hurting anyone's ego, or rolling over and letting people slam you, but if you want to be gentle, you at least can't scold people, right? Galatians 6.1 Brothers, even if a person is caught in some transgression, you who are spiritual should correct that one in a gentle spirit, looking to yourself, so that you also may not be tempted. Okay, gentleness is not only compatible with scolding or correcting the guilty, but it's actually a helpful tool in doing so. So, now that we know what gentleness isn't, what are we left with? What is gentleness? Gentleness is an approach to life, an insistence on repeatedly treating others right. As with patience and self-control, this isn't about going easy on people who do evil and refuse to repent. Even Jesus himself didn't do that. It's about treating people right. When a person is righteous or guilty but repentant, you treat them the way you want to be treated, with respect and charity. If a person is the victim of a lie but sincerely seeking the truth, you treat them with respect and charity as well, and as far as you can, help them find a solution to their problem. On the other hand, if a person is committed and entrenched in evildoing, respect and charity take on a totally different form. You respect the person enough to not want them to continue in their sin, and the most charitable thing you can do at times is to try to shock them out of their commitment to evildoing, like Jesus did to the Pharisees. At times like these, there's nothing more gentle than being bold, shocking, and determined to denounce evildoing. That's what gentleness really is. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.